NBC's Peter Alexander is with us this morning. Peter, we're here, the, the, the feet of the Capitol. I mean, this mess behind you yeah. is just the, that that's actually a good indication of what it looks like inside this building. These were r looters, rioters and ransackers who made a mess of the place. You're exactly right. This is the leftover debris. Only a matter of hours ago, this place was overrun by these pro-Trump loyalists, these rioters. Now, as you see, it is quiet with the exception of us and our cameras here. It's just a cordon of National Guard and police and others. It was a striking scene that took place at three. 42 in the morning where Congress, frankly, the vice president, Mike Pence, ultimately confirmed president-elect Joe Biden as the next president of the United States, as well as Kamala Harris, to join him as the vice president-elect by 306 to 232 electoral votes. But it came after what was that dramatic uh, day. You saw the violence that took place there. And, and Pence was presiding alongside Pelosi at that very same day as were only a matter of hours earlier. You saw some of these uh, rioters standing up there, some taking photos, taking selfies from inside. The president for the first time, Savannah, now is acknowledging his defeat. We heard from him in a statement that came out overnight just after it was confirmed. And he says, in part, even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election and the facts bear me out, nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th which is notable because this president before had not committed to a peaceful transfer of power for the first time, acknowledging defeat, even if he's still not convinced of the results. It's notable because he did, as far as he could, concede the election and recognize reality. What about inside the White House? I mean, we saw a spate of resignations yeah. yesterday. You have sources inside the White House. What were they saying about their own reaction to this, but also the president's mindset? I think they were stunned uh, from the conversations I had with a series of White House officials. They couldn't believe what they were witnessing up here. Despite all the reporting we've done over recent months and all the coverage we've seen with some of the president's loyalists who bought into everything he's said, and they've said they're going to follow him. The president, you remember yesterday when he spoke just below the White House at that rally, said, I'm going to join you as we march up to the Capitol. In fact, sort of inciting them ahead of this moment here. There were resignations, including one of the president's former press secretaries, Stephanie Grisham. She is now the chief of staff to the first lady, Melania Trump, a deputy press secretary, a social secretary, another uh, high ranking individual in the National Security Council as well. And I don't think it's done based on our conversations. There is a lot of uh, a lot of conversation privately behind the scenes about who's going to stick this out, even with only a matter of weeks left. And Savannah, notably, Democrats are among those right now calling for getting rid of this president before the end of his term, either by impeachment, perhaps through the 25th Amendment. Some Republicans, frankly, calling for a censure before he leaves office. Well, you know, I, I've heard Republican congressmen, as this was all unfolding, saying, pleading with the president on cable, call it off, tell your supporters to stop, to, 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 to leave the Capitol. And I think a lot of Republicans we spoke to on the air yesterday were disappointed with the president's statements while this was all unfolding. Peter, stay there. We'll continue to cover it.